Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and today, sitting here in front of me, I have possibly the cutest and the strangest thing I have reviewed on my channel thus far. Um, what I have here in front of me is actually a toy piano, and I've had a few people over the duration of my channel saying, I want to see you review a toy piano. I haven't gotten, like, hundreds of comments saying it, but I have gotten, you know, 10 or 15 or so. Um, so I figured that it was time, at last, to finally um, satisfy that urge from some of you and to actually review a toy piano. However, what I have here today is not just any old toy piano. It's not your average shown hut little thing that you bought at Guitar Center. This is something a little bit more special. Now, for those of you who know a thing or two about pianos, you may have heard of the piano company called Kawai. They're a, actually a very famous Japanese piano manufacturer, and some of the pianos they make are truly world-class. The Shigeru Kawai SKEX is easily in the top 10 uh, pianos manufactured in today's era. So they make world-class concert grants and pianos, excellently made pianos for the household as well. And then they also have this. <laughs> they have a toy piano, um, and it literally is made by Kawaii in Japan. It says Kawaii, made in Japan. I also have a little badge that says We Love Children by Kawaii. Um, so it's a literal, like, a little toy piano made by Kawaii with the Kawaii logo on the fallboard. And that alone, I just love it. And I've seen videos of the grand piano version of this, because they make a, a grand piano and an upright version, and the grand piano version sounds really nice. Um, way nicer than you would expect from a toy piano. Um, I mean, it's kawaii. It's gotta sound nice. Um, so, in today's video, I'm gonna dive into this and talk about how cute and awesome this is. I'm hoping it's gonna be just as good as that grand piano version is. Um, I've never actually seen their upright version until, like, a month ago, and I was like, I need this immediately. And as a result, I paid a little bit too much for it. Uh, this one I paid 220 US dollars for, plus 95 dollars shipping, because it was coming straight from Japan. I have seen others um, that are a little bit cheaper. I think I saw a grand piano version that was like 195 plus 50 dollars shipping, so that's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more affordable. Um, but these are not super cheap. They're not like your little 70 dollar Schoenhut pianos, but they sound way better. And they're also made in Japan by Kawaii, and I think that alone is just amazing. So, this is the box it comes in. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be pretty small. And I'm just absolutely... I can't wait to open this up and play it for you guys. So, I think what I'm going to do is open this up out of the box and get it ready to play and then show it to you guys in all of its little tiny glory. Uh, what's really cool is Kawaii actually has a bit of a history making small toy pianos. Um, back in the 40s and 50s, they actually made uh, an instrument called the mini piano, which was similar to this in that it was a small, scaled-down piano for children, but unlike this, it was actually a legitimate piano. You had a wooden soundboard and actual strings and tuning pins, a soundboard, a metal harp. You had an actual tiny action and little tiny keys. Uh, it was a legitimate piano, but very, very small. Not as small as this, but still very small. And um, that, I think, was pretty cool. And I also believe, I thought I heard, and this might not be true, but I thought I had heard that Kawaii, at certain times in their history, actually made little wooden toys for the village children um, with the extra parts they had lying around from making pianos. You know, blocks of wood, they'd shape them into toys. And I might be thinking of something else, but I thought I had heard that. And if that's true, that's very cool. And if that isn't true and it wasn't Kawaii... It's still a cool story, so I figured I'd tell you guys that. Anyway, now it's time to get this out of the box for real and check it out. So now I have it out of the box, and as you can see, it is so unbelievably cute and tiny and small. I just, I can't get over how little it is. Every time I walk out of the room and then walk back in, I just all, honestly almost laugh at the fact that I'm making a video about this. It is so cute. So tiny and so adorable, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty playable. Um, I've been messing around with it a little bit off camera, and um, I've found some music that I can actually play on it. Of course, your repertoire is going to be a bit limited because you only do have two and a half octaves. You've got it starts off an F down here. You've got one octave. You've got two octaves, and then it goes from this uh, third F up to C, which is actually about C eight on a real piano. Um, and everything here is like properly tuned too, which is really cool. Um, so you've only got two and a half octaves, so your range of repertoire is going to be very, very limited. I've tried to play some Bach, I run out of keys. I've tried to play Mozart, I run out of keys. I've tried to play Beethoven, I don't even have enough keys for the beginning first two seconds. Um, so you're, you will run out of, of keys, but again, it is for children, and 
children aren't going to be playing Mozart and Beethoven. They're going to be, you know, playing single notes at a time and, you know, learning Mary Had a Little Lamb. And for that kind of stuff, it has more than enough keys. Um, and I think just honestly, even though it's perhaps not the most versatile musical instrument, um, I just think the, the petite size of it and the cuteness, uh, the cute factor, I think, outweighs its musicality factor. And I think that is part of the reason I find it really, really amazing. Um, so now, like I said, one fun fact that I think most people know. Um, but like I said, this is made in Japan by kawaii, and actually, fun fact, the Japanese word kawaii with two eyes at the end actually means cute. Uh, so that is a very, very fitting name for this, um, and it's just really, that's just really fitting too to me. Um, so as far as the weight and the size of it goes, as you can see, it's very tiny. Um, when you tilt it back, it actually makes a loud percussive noise like that, which is kind of a fun added side effect. Um, you can see here it's got these cute little um, little carvings down here on the bottom plate that appears to be able to even be removable as well. Um, and one thing I find kind of neat about this is despite it being a toy, the wood quality is actually pretty high. It looks like this is actually solid wood on the sides and the front. Now the back panel here that has some holes to allow sound out, that is actually like press board, particle board. Um, and it's got some little holes in it to allow the sound out. So you got this nice, it's actually metal, that's an actual metal grate there, and then you can see either, those are either the resonator tubes inside of there, or those are actually the tubes that create the, no the noise, and it's actually like a tiny tubular um, bell. I don't know exactly how this works, my impression is that it uses uh, bars like you would find on, say, a, a vibraphone or a glockenspiel. And in fact, I'd say that this is more rather like a miniature key glockenspiel uh, than it is like a miniature piano, although it definitely does look like a miniature piano. Um, so I just think this is absolutely adorable and absolutely tiny. So I've changed the camera angle here so you can see a closer up view of the tiny kawaii piano. And as I said earlier, it is very light. I can very easily pick it up and move it around, but the weight of the whole thing isn't the only thing about it that's light. The weight of the keys themselves is also remarkably light. You can my, you might have heard there I just actually made one of the notes sound on accident. Um, the weight of these keys is by far the lightest of any keyboard instrument I have ever played. Lighter than an unweighted keyboard, lighter than an organ, lighter than anything. And to prove this, I will bring in the good old gram weights. Now, this is a set of gram weights, and this is a tool used professionally by um, piano technicians to determine the weight of a piano's key. Your average acoustic piano typically is somewhere in the ballpark of 50 to 70 grams. Some are heavier, some are even lighter, but 50 to 70 is a good roundabout number, and most pianos will fall within that category. So these are graduated weights. The one at the bottom is 32, the next one up is 16, the next one up would be uh, 8, and then you'd have 4, you'd have 2, and you'd have 1. And with the combinations of all of these, you can get basically every number that you'd pretty much want. However, I don't need any of these. I can set all of these aside. The only one I need is the four gram weight. That is the amount of weight it takes to make these keys depress. That is it. Four grams of weight. Now I've had a lot of people ask me over the years um, for a instrument that has a really light action um, for a number of different reasons. Sometimes they just want something that has light action. Other times they have medical conditions that make playing a real piano or even a digital piano difficult for them. And if you find even a digital piano with a light action to be difficult to play, then maybe you might want to look into one of these because I think even a mouse could walk across these keys and make it sound. Um, it is incredibly, incredibly light. Um, and as a result, it feels unlike anything I have ever decided to try to play. Um, and that, I think, is just one of the interesting things about it. So now I think it's time to try out some music on this little tiny kawaii piano. And one of its downfalls, as cute as it is, and as much as I love it, it does have a few downfalls. And one of those downfalls is, I think I may have said this already in the video, but you've only got two and a half octaves. Um, you've got one octave here, two octaves here, and then it ends at C, so from F to C. So that means your repertoire range is pretty much very limited. Um, but I will do my best to play a selection of, of pieces of music and samples and sections and, and fragments of pieces of music that actually do work on here. Um, and I think the first one we'll start off with is my traditional old treble test piece that I wrote myself to test out the treble of acoustic pianos. Uh, it actually works on here. I have to rearrange some stuff and play things in the wrong octave, but I actually can play it. So let's check out how that sounds.
So as you can hear, this little tiny piano actually sounds very pretty. Uh, for what it is, for, for the, the, for just what it is, that's a tiny toy piano, and yet it actually genuinely sounds pretty. You could actually use this in a piece of music, and somebody might not even be able to tell that it actually was a $300 toy. Um, so let's play another little selection of music here um, and see if anybody actually recognizes it. Um, if it's a piece a friend of mine has been wanting me to play in my videos a lot, and I will play it in today's video because it's actually pretty fitting for a number of different reasons. First of all, I can actually fit it on the range of this instrument without having to transpose anything, and that alone makes it worthy to play. Now, as I said, I'm only really I'm only really able to play small little samples of music on here um, that because the range is so small. Um, and as you can hear, there were a couple of times there where I played two notes at once, and that I think is one of the drawbacks of this instrument. Um, of course, I'm going to analyze it as how good of a musical instrument is it. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this video. So, as a musical instrument, sonically, it is honestly pretty great. Um, for a toy, it is really amazing. And for a legitimate musical instrument, it's actually pretty decent. Um, the action, I think, is a little bit too light um, to really be, like, super usable. I realize it's made for children, and so they'd want it to be very light for a child with little tiny hands, which is also why it's tiny, because it's for kids. Um, but also, I think that makes it difficult to play, because it's remarkably easy to accidentally play other notes that you didn't mean to play, that you wouldn't have that problem on a more normal instrument, but on this, because it only takes, once again, can't believe this, four grams uh, to make the keys depress, because it only takes four grams, it's remarkably easy to actually make things sound when you don't mean them to. Um, let's see, what else can I play on here? Um, I will actually do something that probably shouldn't be played on this, but I will do this anyway. It does not fit, it does not belong, but I will still do it anyway, because I can't think of much else to play, so let's try this. And frankly, that second half of that actually does work remarkably well on this. Um, but honestly, overall, I think this is pretty fantastic. I think, again, it is a toy, so I don't really know how hard I should judge it. I think because it sounds so good, um, and it is actually a usable musical instrument, I'm kind of judging it a little bit harder than if it didn't sound very good. Um, but I think the key bed and the action of this definitely could use some refining. Um, sometimes a key will stick to your finger, and then it'll kind of trip you up a little bit, or sometimes it'll fly up a little bit too high because they do kind of bobble a bit when they come back up. And again, they're so incredibly light that even when I was playing the slow Davy Jones theme, uh, I was having problems with notes hitting when they weren't supposed to hit. And you could actually look at that as being a positive. Um, in a weird sense, because if you gave this to a child and said, you know, and they liked it and they liked to play it, they would learn to be very, very precise about playing notes if they, you know, if they tried to play a piece and knew how it was supposed to sound. If they knew how it was supposed to sound and could tell when they played wrong notes, they would actually learn to be very precise about hitting the right notes at the right time. Um, and that actually is a pretty good skill. Um, so perhaps that was done intentionally. I don't know. Um, but overall, I think this is a lot of fun to play. I think what I'm going to do now is play a piece of music that you guys really enjoyed the last time I played it. So I will play it again in this video. Um, again, because it also fits in the range of, of this keyboard. Not the full song, but just the beginning part that everyone knows. And then I'll also just mess around and play some chords and scales, because that's another thing this could be used for, is just simply for learning the notes, no, names of the notes. You know, oh, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is C sharp, you know, things like that, and learning how to play different scales. So I will do that on here as well and just we'll have some fun with it.
And that, of course, that little last bit was the tiny, tiny excerpt of Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Uh, that, I, I don't know why I didn't start the video off with that, frankly, um, because that actually sounds amazing on here. Um, so... The Kawaii Mini Piano, the, the, the tiny piano, they just literally just call it Upright Piano. There's a bunch of Japanese writing on the box, so maybe it has an actual name. I'm just going to call it the Tiny Piano. Um, this overall is really, really fantastic. It is a lot of fun to play, uh, even though it does have its little weird quirks with the action. Um, it is a lot of fun to play, and I genuinely enjoy it. I think the build quality quality of it is super high. I think the appearance of it is stunning. They put a lot of great attention to detail to this. Although the key bed isn't perfect, they have put some nice attention to detail, like the little red line of felt uh, at the top that not only makes it look like a, a tiny shrunk down piano, but it also helps with those keys that like to come flying up. It prevents them from making noise if they hit that wood. And then also, you can't see it, but underneath of the key bed, there's also another row of felt, kind of like you'd see in a real piano, um, except it allows you to um, it allows the keys to make less noise when they hit the key, but there still is key noise. Um, that's another issue with it, but if you mic it properly, you can actually eliminate a vast majority of said key noise. Um, and that, I think, is all I really wanted to show you guys in the close-up shot of this Kawaii mini piano. It kind of puts it into scale how tiny it is. I don't even have big hands, and they make it look tiny. Uh, it's just adorable, and I love it. Would you guys like to see me take this apart? I don't know that I can get the top or the back off, but I do know that underneath of here, we have two screws. And I believe if I remove those two screws, this bottom plate should come off. There's also two screws here that might be connected somehow, but I'm gonna take this screwdriver and see if I can open this up and maybe get a hint as to how this mechanism works. So I'll come back to you once this is all apart. Screws are out, things are coming loose. Let's see, does this lift off? Ooh, it just lifts off. Here we go. Look at that. That is not what I was expecting at all. That is, that is fascinating. That is, that is really, really interesting. I did not expect that at all. That is super cool. And here's the, here's the look of the piece of wood. You can see it's actually completely solid. You've got two little bricks here to secure it to the bottom plate. Uh, very nice, very nice quality. I like that. And then here's the inside. It looks like you've got little plasticky hammers that appear to be directly attached to the back of the key. Um, and then they swing down and hit these little oval-shaped metal tubes. Um, so it's kind of like a miniature teeny tiny set of chimes, I guess, that's inside of there. I'm assuming this little black piece of foam is either there for dampening or for harmonic control. That's my two guesses for that. Um, and then you just have this little freely swinging, very, very light piece of plastic um, that will swing down and, and play the note. So when you push the key down, it will tug on that little piece of plastic and make it swing forwards and, uh, and hit the note. So that explains why there's so little weight, why the action is so ridiculously light, because there's nothing on the other end. There's just this little tiny piece of, of this little tiny hammer, I guess you could say, um, that's there, and then that's it. So that is the mechanism that powers this little tiny quiet piano. And because it's laying on its back, I can't actually play it, but 
you can kind of see that it all moves. Uh, so I think that's really, really cool. So here is the underside of the Kawaii Tiny Baby Piano. Um, it's in playing position now, so uh, you can see when I move the keys, the hammers actually move. So I'm going to play a tiny assortment of music here just to show you guys what it looks like in action. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Isn't that neat? I think that's pretty cool. So, did you guys like to see me take apart the Kawaii Tiny Piano and check out the insides? I had fun. I thought that was super cool. And if you guys liked that, let me know and I'll check, I'll try to take apart other instruments that I review on my channel in the future. Um, overall, I love this thing. I think it is absolutely fantastic. For a thing marketed as a toy, marketed for children, the build quality is high, the musicality is amazing, especially for a toy, but even just as a general musical instrument, it's quite usable. Um, and as a whole, I think it's fantastic. Of course, I do think the key bed could use some improvements, like I said, um, but overall, I think it's amazing. Now, some of you might be wondering why the range is so small. Why is it only two and a half octaves? The low end sounds great. They could keep going lower and lower and it would still sound good. But the reason for that is because this low note has a lot of sustain. You can hear it just ring and ring and ring and it's just about dead now. So if you kept going lower, the notes, not only would the piano have to be taller because you saw that low tine or tube, whatever you want to call it, was just about touching the piano. So you'd have to make it be taller and be kind of out of proportion to accommodate lower notes or curve them. That might work. I don't know. That might not work. Um, but either way, you'd either have to make the bottom half of the piano taller, and you'd also start to need a damper pedal. And how you'd operate a damper pedal on an instrument this tiny, unless it was a cable, kind of like you'd have on the old Wurlitzer 200s that you could route anywhere, like a bicycle brake cable, and then you could pump it with your foot on the floor. Adding a damper pedal it would add a lot of complexity, and that's why it stopped right here, because that note um, has enough sustain that you don't need a damper pedal for it. But anything below that, if you wanted to play a bunch of stuff in this register, you'd need a damper pedal. And it would sound good, but you just need a damper pedal. And the piano would have to be taller and look kind of weird. So they kept it this way so that it would be in the normal proportions of a tiny upright piano, and so that you wouldn't need a damper pedal. And I kind of figured that out as I was playing it, because I was a little bit frustrated by the lack of keys. I could play so much more. This video could have been twice as long, filled with more music of this thing, um, but I just didn't have enough pieces, any pieces, that fit and worked well. But overall, I think it's amazing, and overall, I'm very happy with my purchase. Did I spend too much? Yeah. Was it worth it? I think so. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video too. Um, I highly recommend these, especially if you can find them for a little bit less than what I paid. Um, I think it is absolutely stunning. I think even just as, you know, a piece of furniture, I guess, you know, wall art, put it up on a shelf and just look at how cute it is. Uh, I think that is amazing. Um, and then not only that, but it's actually a playable musical instrument that I think is wonderful. Um, you may see this crop up in future videos uh, on the channel, maybe like as an actual musical instrument. I do not know. Um, also, if there's enough interest, if this video gets enough views, um, perhaps, especially if it's really fast, perhaps I'll buy other toy pianos like the infamous Shone Huts that I dislike so much and uh, do a comparison between these because I I think this undeniably has the best sound of any toy piano 
that I have ever heard or played. Um, it actually is pretty to listen to. Um, so as a result, it's fun to play, it's fun to look at, and I just genuinely love it. I've always had a, a, a liking for small pianos. Um, you guys have known, if you've followed my channel for, you know, six, eight months a year, you'll know that I've done a few videos here and there on small pianos. There was the Tiny Tom Thumb, there was the the Melody Grand, Melata Grand, um, there was the, pretty recently at DC Pianos, I found a, a Honer and, and Kuhn Pianetta. It was a little tiny spinet piano with less keys and stuff, and I think I've got another one from them that I've either uploaded or will be uploading in the future. Um, I just like small pianos, and this is like the smallest piano ever, uh, and it's amazing, and I love it. So hopefully you guys love it too. Uh, if you did love it, you might want to go check out my channel. I don't have any other videos of this yet, but I do have many other videos of full-size Kawai pianos and the Kawai mini piano I mentioned earlier in the video, although the example I found wasn't exactly playable, but still was a cool thing to look at. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed, you might want to go check out my channel if you're new here, and if you enjoyed all of that, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.